Hi everyone, you're welcome to this short video lesson. The title before us today is uh, Population, Sample and Sampling Techniques. I want to believe that we will do our best to do justice to this uh, video lecture so that at the end of this lecture we will have gotten a very good understanding of this topic before us and uh, we will be able to uh, lay bare uh, every gray areas in this topic so my name is uh, Lawrence Adekoya and I will be your anchor your lead in this video lecture but before we proceed I would like us to look at some of the lesson objectives for this course so here are some of the questions you'll be able to answer after watching this video lecture what is population and we should be able to put that in context number two question is the question of what types of population are there what types of population are there the next question i want us to answer after watching this video is the question of what is sample also we should be able to answer the question what is census what is census the next question is the comparison of between census and sampling are there any major differences and of course we should be able to look at the advantages of census and uh, sampling vis-a-vis -vis their disadvantages now let us proceed what is population in context i mean in statistical and research context a population can refer to any collection of specified group of human beings or of non-human non entities such as subjects educational institutions time units, geographical areas, or of course, any group of entities that are of study interest. I was able to know that this does not correspond with the dem demographic meaning of population as we define it in geography, where we say uh, the population is the entire pop group of humans living in a particular geographical location. That will be for geography, but not in statistics. It is actually it actually refers to uh, any specific collection of items or entities that are of study interest. That is what we know population to be. Now, from that population as we have defined it, for example, therefore, the entire students in Lasso, for example, will become a population. And then selecting a group of students from the entire population of Lasso, I mean students, uh, will become a sample of this population where our population is the entire population the entire student in Lasso. This does not however include those people in Lasso who are not students. Our population is strictly defined as students in Lasso while our sample is a selected group of students amongst the entire population so when you select a group of elements from the totality of a population this is known as sample and of course sampling will be a subset of a uh, population as a way of example i can have a population my population to be defined as all students in math 205 class as we are having here right now all students in this class will be referred will be part of the population while a sample of this class of this population will be the top 20 students in the entire class so another example is the entire population of bike men in lagos the entire population of bike men in lagos can be another example of a population while the bike men who who wears helmets can be a sample a subgroup a subset of that population so let us look at uh some types of population of course there are four major types of population and they are the finite population 
the infinite population, the existent population, and the hypothetical population. Uh, we shall be looking at each of these ones in uh, sufficient details. Uh, now, now, let us quickly look at finite population. The word finite population, the word finite by itself means something that has a beginning and an end, that is countable. A population, therefore, is called finite if it is possible to count its individual, if every element of the population are countable. It is called finite population. For example, the population of students in MAT 205 will be finite. An example, the population of, um, the population of, for example, let us say, for example, the population of pebbles or stone types will be infinite because they cannot be counted. So when a population is infinite, we say it is not it is not it is it is not countable another population is existent you can see the group of humans in this picture that they are actually existing a population that consists of existing elements visible elements will be referred to as a population of or of an existent population while a hypothetical population will be that population of situations, of observations, of numbers that are not really in existence. For example, uh, it will be hypothetical for me to say uh, the, the salaries of a group of workers. It is not an existing population. We cannot see it. We cannot really, it, is not, it does not have physical presence. The population of, another example, population of, take for example, uh, readings from a weather station is hypothetical. Okay, so sampling or census, which do we go for? What is sampling and what is census? Census is a study of every unit, everyone, or everything in a population. It is known as the complete enumeration, which means completely counting every individual. While a sample is a subset of units of a population, a, of selected to represent all units in the population, it is a partial enumeration. It means you don't have to count every individual entity in a population. So a sample is just the enumeration of a group, a subset, a subgroup of the population. Information from a sense from a, from a sample can be from a sample can be generalized for the entire population. So when do we go for sound census? Census should be adopted when the population is finite. It is countable and they are all accessible and when the complete enumeration of the entire population is actually economical that is the only situation when census can be advisable can be adoptable and can be used also the advantages of census would include therefore it can provide a measure a true measure of the population Sensors are usually very accurate. They are usually the most accurate and they don't give us any issue as per sampling errors. There's the benchmark data can be obtained for future studies. That's another advantage. And the detailed information about smaller groups in the population can be made available. But it has its own drawbacks. Sensors may be difficult to apply when it is not possible or it is very difficult to enumerate all units of the population, especially when the population is unaccessible or it is dangerous to assess all the, all the population or it is even uh, not practical 
to get to every element in a population, for example, infinite population. It will be very difficult to apply sensors. Another disadvantage of uh, sensors is that it may require higher costs, both in terms of human resources, monetary, and even time. It may be it may be a lot more expensive, a lot more difficult, a lot more impossible, and require more time to access even for even for a uh, finite population. Sensors may require a lot more time and energy, and uh, of course a lot more human power. Or manpower to to carry out a census. Generally, a census takes longer to collect, process, and release data than from a sample. Some of the advantages of uh, sampling. This would include number one that uh, sampling generally costs lower than a uh, census. Of course, this is so because. Uh, you only have to you only have to uh, access and uh, analyze data from a small smaller group of the entire population. Also, because of that, results may be available in less time. It means you spend lesser time in assessing a sample than assessing the entire population in a census. And uh, the number three advantage is that if you actually employ the use of uh, good sampling techniques, there is the advantage that uh, results can become very representative of the actual population. So rather than uh, achieving that result by census, by accessing, by enumerating completely the population, entire population, you can actually get the same ad, uh, results from uh, sampling. Some disadvantages of sampling would include, however, that data may not be representative of the total population, particularly where the sample size is small, where you have used the wrong sampling, sampling size, sample size, or you have adopted the wrong sampling technique. So number two of disadvantage is that uh, it doesn't really produce benchmark data on like in census it doesn't really produce benchmark data unlike in census the number three advantage of sense of sampling is that disadvantage of sampling is that uh, data collected from a subset of units and inferences made about the whole population may be least misleading because they may contain what we call sampling error so sampling error we will look at that topic in future videos but this can lead to some misleading outcomes. Number four, a disadvantage of sampling is that the decreased number of units will reduce the detailed information about smaller subgroups uh, within the population. So when census is not really possible, when it is not viable to go for census, it's not timely or economically possible to go for census, it is best that we go for sampling in the next videos we'll be looking at sampling techniques we'll be looking at sampling techniques finally uh, i would employ you all to take your time to look at the questions at the end of this video and see that you can answer all of them feel free to rewind this video and watch sections that pertain to particular question that you don't seem to be able to answer clearly and make sure that you are able to provide answers to this set of questions after watching this video thank you for watching i remain yours truly lawrence adikoya see you in the next